Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I believe we are episode 258 tonight. I'm Julie the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And I want to welcome you to YouTube if this is your first time watching me on YouTube. We are now live exclusively on YouTube. We've moved over from simulcasting to both Facebook and YouTube. So hopefully our Facebook folks, folks find their way over here. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed week. This is what we are making tonight. I'm calling it a gift card envelope box. I'm creating this. Um, this will look a little bit familiar. Usually we would have made a box like this using the envelope punch board, but I love to pixify things. And inside, let me show you a quick sneak peek and I'll do a couple of housekeeping items. I wanna give a shout out to my customer, Vicki, who suggested this awesome treat. Loker minis, you can find them at Costco, but I also ordered them on Amazon. Got my little 3D printed gift card, and if you wanted to, you could add like a mini card in the box as well. But that's what the box is sized for. Really, it's sized for a gift card and a treat, but that treat was just way too perfect to, um, way too perfect to fit into that box. So I'm trying to put my little belly band back on here. Here we go. And bear with Brian, he's moderating tonight for the first time on YouTube, but let's see, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? <laughs> if you've got a question tonight, put Q colon in front of your question that will help us cue your questions for the end for our live Q and A. I will stay on live until I've answered all your questions. That helps me focus on tonight's project and delivering the tutorial for you. And then we'll switch gears at the end and do the live Q&A. I do have some things to chat about really briefly. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Please use my current host code if your order is under $150. The easiest way to use that is my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically add my current host code for you. And if your order is $150 or more, don't add the host code, but you'll still earn Pixie Perks. Let's see, we do have, I have show and tell, but I wanna jump in really quickly and share about the Stampin' Up! Join promotion that's going on right now. For now through October 31st, the starter kit is $99, but you get to choose up to $155 in product. And I wanted to share one of the products that you can get your hands on on the starter kit. Right now we are in the pre-order for the Fitting Florets collection of products. This is, some of it is a sneak peek of what's coming in the mini catalog, January to June, and some products are exclusive now, or should say November 1st through January 4th. However, it's demonstrator pre-order this month, and that also means that that demo perk can be applied to a starter kit. So the Fitting Florets Sweet Collection, Forgive my printer, because it just does not do this justice at all. The full collection is $97.50, so it can be added to a starter kit. It comes with the framed florets bundle, the framed and festive stamp set, fitting florets designer series paper, and gold adhesive backed swirls, which let me show you real quickly. I'm going to have these products in my hands for next week's live stream, and I'll share them with you. But how exciting is this? Framed florets stamp set framed florets dies. Y'all, this is going to help me so much because I cannot remember the names. They're naming the dies and the stamp the same name. And then this is an exclusive stamp set, framed and festive. I know it's going to be super tiny, but love the font in this and the sentiments. And then this beautiful paper, which let me just share the colors. We'll talk about it again next week. Balmy blue, blushing bride, crushed curry, evening evergreen, night of navy, polished pink and soft succulent. How's that for color combination? So this can be added to a starter kit. Starter kits, the starter kit plus is available through October 31st. Again, $155 in product for only 99 and it ships for free. So I love that. Fitting florets. All right, show and tell. Lily did a little bit of a throwback. She was working on some unfinished paper pumpkins today. And this was the one that had the On the Horizons, I think it was. It was one that coordinated with that beautiful six by six paper. So these are her cards that she made for tonight. 
And then Nolan's uh, show and tell, this is our children. Lily is nine, she's our fourth grader, and Nolan is seven, he's our first grader. And his is giant, so we're gonna do this quickly in quadrants. This is a house that he has drawn for his desk pet. He's going to pick out a desk pet from the school store apparently on Friday and he wanted to draw a house. So this is apparently the bank where he stores all his money. See all those dollar signs and coins? And then we've got the house down here, which I was told this is a toilet, bathroom. Um, this is where they prepare the food or there's food on the kitchen table. This is a TV. I mean, that's a giant wall TV there. That's a couch. And then on the stairs, he says there's gems falling down the stairs. So <laughs> we've got a beehive and a bee. And then I believe this is a garden. That looks like your container garden maybe from the backyard. So that's Nolan's show and tell for tonight. Let me bring this back in. I'm going, it was so hard for me to not do a Christmas project, but I wanted to do a fall project. Now you all know this can be completely adapted for Christmas or, or birthday or any other occasion. But I used some inspiration from the catalog. And we're using the Fond of Autumn bundle, which is a beautiful fall bundle. I'm gonna show you, if you haven't seen it already, this set of dies. It's one die, but it cuts out four different pieces. So you can get four little um, embellishments or vignettes, I should say, from one die. And I use this as inspiration here. I had to look at the supply list to kind of figure out the colors they used, but I just kind of went with that with Calypso Coral and Soft Succulent. Um, so we're gonna do that together tonight, a little bit of coloring, but I love this bundle. Again, Fond of Autumn Bundle, page 52 on the in the mini catalog. And this box, let me show it to you up close. You guys, this box only uses a six by six inch piece of paper. So one of the benefits of doing diagonal score lines is that you can get a bigger box with, or you don't need as much paper to create a box. So again, let me show you. I just put this in as a sample. This is just a little mini little card that you could fit in there. Brian did a 3D printing of a gift card size. And then these are the Loker minis. I will share the link to where I found them on Amazon. This is like a 40 pack, but there's hazelnut, vanilla, and chocolate, and they are just the cutest little, let me show you all the different flavors here, the cutest little treat. So Vicki, if you're watching, thank you so much for the suggestion. I had to check them out because you know I'm always in love with new treats, and these are very yummy. I've already sampled a few, and so have the kids. Have you tried any yet? No. Brian now knows where the stash is. If I had to pick a favorite, I think it would be the vanilla one, but they're all delicious. So let's go ahead and jump into making this project. We'll make the box first and then we're gonna do some coloring. All right, and then this little trinket comes from the Splendid Day Suite. Let me show ya if I can find that. Hold on, I should have dog-eared that page as well. Splendid Day 64. It is the open leaf trinkets, which I thought looked really pretty with this, and I just stuck that on with a glue dot. I'm probably gonna add one more little sprig of flowers behind it. But we've got just got a little belly band there with uh, crumb cake cardstock, and I just loved those colors together. All right, let's jump in. I am grabbing a piece of Calypso Coral from our Subtles six by six inch designer series paper. What I love about these papers, you get 40 sheets in a pack for each of the 10 colors in the color family. Now, if you do the in color ones, you get eight each, but there's a couple of different patterns. And for this project, I recommend that you pick a non-directional pattern because we are gonna be scoring it diagonal. And if it's a directional pattern, it might go a little cattywampus on you. So let's go ahead and do non-directional. Gonna bring in the Simply Scored, and many of you have asked me about this over the years. I have taken a Sharpie and drawn a line at the six inch mark. I do that on every Simply Scored I've ever gotten to help me with diagonal score lines. Now you remember back in the day, we used to have a diagonal scoring plate. We had the envelope punch board and that's sort of the tools we would use to do diagonal score lines, but we've adapted. So all you need to do is just draw a Sharpie line and I picked the six inch mark because that gives me the most space left and right from 
that line. So with the pattern that you want to be the outside of our gift card envelope box, you're gonna line up point to point on the score line. Let me grab, oh, the stylus and make sure I can see my notes here for measurements. Now I always like to give you less measurements and then you can kind of rotate 180. So when I do the project sheet, I will make sure to include all the measurements, but you could just simply do the following two measurements. So it doesn't really matter um, since this is not directional, but I'm gonna go ahead and score at seven and three quarters. I like to put my stylus right there and then slowly bring it down, picking up the paper and score. Now with my left hand, now if you're left-handed, this will be opposite, I'm right-handed. But with my left hand, I'm holding the paper in place and making sure that those points stay on that six inch line. So we did seven and three quarters and then eight and three eighths, same thing. Okay, I'm gonna rotate 180 and we're gonna repeat the same thing, seven and three quarters, eight and three eighths. So lining up those points, holding it in place, seven and three quarters, eight and three eighths. Okay, then we're gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. So now those score lines are going horizontal right now. Again, lining up those points and we are gonna score at seven and one eighth. and seven and three quarters. Okay, I'm gonna rotate 180 again. Seven and one eighth. Seven and three quarters. There we go. So we're gonna have something that looks like that. Okay, and that is size so the center section is big enough to hold a gift card, okay? The template is probably the template probably took me longer to create than the project itself. I've never done a diagonal <laughs> diagonal lines on I, in Illustrator, so that was fun. Now I know how to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. Yes, I still have my envelope punch board too, Kathy. I can't let go of it. And the diagonal plate, I still have that as well, yes. <laughs> all right, so we have folded and burnished on all the score lines. And with our middle section in landscape or horizontal, I'm gonna come in and cut up each of these now vertical score lines. We've got this kind of in a diamond orientation. We've got the center section in landscape or um, horizontal and I'm going to cut up each of these vertical score lines stopping at the second score line okay so this is like we are creating a box all right so let me turn it this way we've just cut up these two score lines then I'm going to remove this corner here and this piece here leaving behind a tab so turn it a quarter of a turn Remove that little corner piece. And then this extra section on the tab. I'm gonna turn it back to a quarter of a turn. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Cutting up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the second horizontal. Remove this little triangular piece. And this one. So we've got those two tabs now. I'm just gonna fold this big section out of the way. Of course, there was I uh, had a tip to trim this a little bit more, but I forgot. I will show you in just a minute. <laughs> so we're just going to miter cut these tabs. Like so, okay? So now we're gonna turn it 180 and repeat the same thing on the opposite side, again with that center section in landscape. Just make sure your tabs are in the right position. Cutting up those vertical score lines and then removing the sections we need to remove. And the crisscross of those diagonal score lines really turn, the, create these little triangles that we're cutting away. This is symmetrical top to bottom. 
So we're just repeating the same things. Again, fold that big section out of the way to come in and miter cut. Get those pieces out of the way. All right, so. My suggestion when you create this yourself is to do this next step before you cut into the tabs. It just makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna have a little bit of extra here on the top and bottom points. So I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. What we're doing right now is just trimming away a little bit of excess here. And I'll show you when we put it together why that is. I'm gonna turn this back over on the floral side or, that, or the pattern we want on the outside. Now I have this in portrait or vertical. I'm gonna fold everything along here. This is why it's easier if you do this before you cut the tabs, but I'm folding on that second score line from the left just to give me this flat edge along here. I want that edge to line up at four and three quarters on my paper trimmer. So I'm just gonna come, it's that line just before the arm that swings out. So just lining up that folded edge there. And then we're just gonna do a quick trim. And it's just a little tiny triangle we're removing. A little bit of excess. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, just folding on that second score line from the left, making sure this section is in portrait. Lining up at four and three quarters and then just doing a little trim. All right, so now that looks like our template, okay? All right, so I'm gonna actually use kind of a combination of tear and tape and liquid glue for this. Um, we're gonna do tear and tape, let me put it in place first. Just gonna put it right along that diagonal edge like so, okay? A little bit less of a mess that way, but then we're gonna use liquid glue for our little tabs. So where we put this tear and tape, I'm gonna glue these two tabs down. So I'm gonna flip it over and put liquid glue on one tab at a time. And we're gonna line up this score line with this cut edge. So we're attaching it to the piece that has the tear and tape. And the liquid glue, liquid glue gives us a little bit of time to make sure we line that up and square up that corner. And I'm just pinching from the inside here to hold that tab down for a few seconds. Then we'll do the second tab. And these are the only two tabs we need to glue down. So again, that score line lining up with this cut edge right here. There we go. All right, so my suggestion for putting this together is to grab what you're going to put into your box. That gives you a little bit of leverage. Again, I just have this little sample card. I ran out of time to design a card. Let me tell you really quickly, if you want to add a card, this is four and a quarter by three and three eighths. This is just regular basic white, but I scored it in half at two and one eighth. Then you have this cute little mini card that you can include with your gift card. So it's exactly the size of a gift card. And then the little Loker minis, but how perfect is that? I love the perfect size there. That was a happy accident. So I'm just gonna put those in and fold down the two sides of our sort of envelope here. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool and just get the backing off. Let me burnish that a little bit more. I'm just burnishing the backing for the tear and tape. And then I also like to fold the top down. Well, not totally down, but <laughs> you wanna do the top last, but that just kinda helps me square up before I press this down. I'm just lining everything up like I'm closing a box, but the only piece that's going to be attached is this lower piece. So just take your time. There we go. 
And again, just kind of dry fitting the lid there, making sure that that side is all where we want it to go, and then pressing down. And the reason why we remove that excess is so that we have that nice edge there. Also, because, I don't know if I still have the piece, this would have a little bit of overhang. So that's part of why I trimmed it away as well. I started with this measurement and just figured the lid could just be the same to make it easier. But how cute is that? It's this cute little envelope box. Uh, that's what we're calling it, a gift card envelope box. So why don't we go ahead and work on decorating this. Now, a couple ways you could close this. You could absolutely do a magnet or Velcro dots. You could tie a ribbon around it. For this option, I'm going to do a belly band, a really easy belly band. No measurements other than the piece that you're starting with. So let's go ahead and do that just to hold it together. I've got a piece of crumb cake and this measures one and a quarter by six and a half. And we're just going to dry fit this. Actually, the easiest way to do this is to kind of line up the one edge like in the middle here, because that's where we're actually gonna have the seam. And then I'm just gonna bend on each of those sort of edges. I'm not doing it super tight, because I do wanna make sure that we can slide this belly band off, okay? And we're gonna hide that seam, so no worries about that. But I wanna pull the belly band off now that we've kind of created those fold lines. I didn't wanna give you a bunch of like 16th inch, 32nd inch measurements. This is always a great way to create belly bands. So I'm just folding then on those folds and burnishing. Sort of straightening up the edges here while I do that so that it'll line up once we wrap it around. All right, so a piece of tear and tape. Where's my end here? There we go. Just gonna put that right on the back side. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I got a little, a new tool caddy and I'm having a hard time seeing where stuff is. That's too funny. All right, so I pulled the backing off the belly band. We're just wrapping this around again. Again, I'm not pulling it too tight and lining that up. There we go, okay? So that should slide on and off, okay? Now let's go ahead and decorate. Let me grab a scrap piece of basic white. This is just a quarter sheet, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. Here is the bundle we're using, Fond of Autumn. Love this, such great fonts, and I love the words in them, the sentiments as well. Love this thank you. And this is one big stamp, but with the dies, it is actually sectioned off. So you'll get four floral pieces using one die, which I love, okay? I'm using the Stamparatus for this because we're using the Memento ink. And pop this underneath to give me a little bit of leverage here. Just in case I want to, I think this is the wrong, that's my shimmery white, hold on. Eh, that's okay, let's use the shimmery white. <laughs> it's got, it's very hard to see, but it's got just a little, it's not picking it up on the camera, but just a little bit of shimmer there. So tuxedo black ink. Now again, this is photopolymer, so sometimes we're gonna get a little bit of ink pooling happening but that's why we use the Stamparatus so we can stamp it a couple times. I'm gonna ink it up one more time here. Lots and lots of stamp and write markers here. So colors we are using. We have got petal pink, uh, crumb cake, calypso coral. What is this one? 
Oh, that's petal pink. I think I did petal pink and a little bit of pale papaya, but let's do petal pink. We'll simplify this. So soft succulent, calypso coral, crumb cake, and petal pink. Grabbing a scrap piece of grid paper to protect my surface. Now I'm gonna end up coloring this whole image here. However, I'm not sure I'm gonna use all the pieces. We can save pieces for another day, but I like to kind of come in, do my dark stuff. I am by no means a alcohol marker expert. I am a newbie, beginner, uh, but I like to just kind of start with dark and then just come in and have fun with it. Cause to me, coloring is super relaxing and not intended to be stressful. So take your time, don't worry if you get out of the lines. I'm gonna do the leaves in brown cause it's fall. And I'm just taking the veins of the leaves and giving it a little bit of darkness. Again, inspiration from the catalog. All right, those leaves will do in dark crumb cake. This will be a little bit of a monotone it kind of is that way. I didn't mean to color that leaf. Crumb cake. <laughs> so we are just coloring soft succulent light. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to do a reboot like we did a few weeks ago. You guys remember that? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, just coloring in the soft succulent leaves. And then when we cut this out, it's like magic. So I'm gonna come in with Calypso Coral. Again, kind of darker towards the center. Do kind of the tips of all of these little berries. I forgot some leaves. There we go. And then just come in and blend it all in. Again, I'm kind of, if you go out of the lines, it's no big deal. And then let's see, I think I'm gonna do those with, let's blend that in a little bit better. There we go. Then we'll do petal pink. The berries here, kind of bring that in. This is dark petal pink. We'll do that in the center of the flowers here. And <laughs> I'm seeing I've missed an acorn and a few leaves. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and cut this baby out. All right, so a little bit of post-it tape. Get my keyboard out of the way. I'm gonna zoom this back out. Wrong direction, there we go. And we're just gonna go ahead and line this up right on the die here. And then I've got two pieces of post-it tape just to hold that into place. Bringing in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And run this baby through. And we'll check out our magic here. All right. So we've got this piece. That's piece number one. Pop out the centers there. And we've got these two really adorable pieces. And then this beautiful piece as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and put this together. Oh, I do need to stamp. Ha <laughs> ha. One second. We're gonna stamp the sentiment. I forgot to thank you. 
I love this thank you in this set. Such a cool combo of fonts. Look at how cool that is. And if I can find my die. All right, do that. Doggies in the background. All right, we're gonna go ahead and center that. Bring this guy back in. Cut this out. This is coming from the Stylish Shapes dies. I love this set of dies. I'll show you them up close in case you don't know which ones I'm referring to. Oh, I have a new trash can that I just knocked down on the floor. <laughs> I wondered if that was going to happen where I put it on my desk. It's only full of a bunch of tiny little paper pieces. <laughs> Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. All right, so we've got our sentiment thank you. And these are the Stylish Shapes dies, which I absolutely love. All these great shapes that have stitching on both the inside and the outside, so you can do frames and die cut pieces. Really, really cool. So we're gonna start to put together our little decoration here. And I think I'm gonna do just slightly different Looking at my, don't know where I put my other belly band. We're gonna wing this one. I think we're gonna do this. Yes, thank you. Looking at that for inspiration. We're gonna do this guy here and I think I'm gonna layer him up here. And I'm gonna grab another one of these trinkets. So I like to dry fit these before I lay them down. Now again, we've got this extra piece we can save for a future project. And I'm just gonna go ahead and layer with a little bit of liquid glue and just only putting just a little bit. Kind of working within the size we have here. I don't want anything hanging off the edge. Again, just putting little, little bits of liquid glue. And that one, I think, let's see. Yeah, I like that. Making sure that the adhesive is only sticking to the belly band here. I'm gonna take this with a mini glue dot actually probably just a pair of mini glue dots so that for some reason, whenever you do two glue dots, then your item stays put. I just put them two right on the stem there and we're gonna just pop that up like, let's see. Yeah, like that for a little bit of gold. I'm gonna grab a trio of, or four. <laughs> I say trio as I pull four of them off. I'm gonna do pop one here, here, and here. And that is just, I just eyeballed that, but that's to try to keep the dimensionals away from the trinket, because that's already pretty popped up. And then we're gonna pop that right up on the front here. And there we have our gift card envelope box. Again, size to fit in a gift card, a chocolate treat, and a little mini note card if you like. So I love the size of it. So finished dimensions are two and a quarter inches in height, three and a half inches in width, and then five eighths of an inch in depth. We go ahead and slide the belly band off and show you again how that goes together. So it does look like an envelope, but also a box. And our treat, the Loker Minis, found at Costco or Amazon. I will update the description with a link to where I purchased these from Amazon, as well as 
uh, the project sheet give me till tomorrow to put the project sheet up because that template took me way too long to create. Just like so. And then we'll slide that back in with the belly band. Probably made that a little too, there we go. Like so. Really, really pretty fall project using the Fond of Autumn bundle. So awesome. All right. Why don't we go ahead and jump into Q&A really quickly. Yes. Quite a few firsts. Oh, a lot of first timers. Yay, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, this is the Q&A time, where I pull up all of you who have a Q in your comment to make sure I can get to your questions. And let's go to the next scene here. Awesome, hello Joanne, welcome. Hi Tina. Do I store Memento ink and Versamark pads upside down like Stampin' Up pads? I sure do. So you'll see I have them labeled like so. This is upside down. There's the lid. I do. I store all of them upside down. Stays on Memento and Versamark just so that the ink is always at the top of the ink pad. Now our ink pads already are stored with the ink pad upside down because of the way that they open. So for those of you that are new to Stampin' Up, if I can do this in the air. Oops. So that's the ink pad. And actually when you close it, it's upside down, but when you open it to use, it's right side up. So yes, I do store the non Stampin' Up ink pads upside down. Great question. You got it today. Oh, that's probably your um, Pixie Perks reward, Nancy Lee. Awesome. Let's see. I am not doing Facebook Lives any longer. We decided to move it completely to YouTube so that we can build our community here. It was getting difficult for me to manage in the comments from both Facebook and YouTube. And Facebook was just making it a little bit more difficult to go live and to do things that I like to do for the stream. So we are exclusively on YouTube as of this evening. Let's see, uh, Terry, I have, I think it's 39,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So the treat we are putting in the box is a Loker Mini. This is what the bag looks like. And it was suggested to me by a customer of mine, Vicky. So thank you, Vicky. It's L-O-A-K-E-R, Loker Minis. If you press share, how do I send to another person? Uh, Nancy Lee, on YouTube, I think you can either choose to text it to someone or email. There's a couple of different options depending on what type of device you're using to share. Do I use the rubber stamp pressure tool often? Just wondering if it is a good thing to have. I use my Stamparatus all the time. I do use it, Marlene. I have a couple of them and I forgot to pull it out tonight. What she's talking about is, one second. I have this one, which is a 3D printed one that's linked in my favorites page. I have this one I just got from Amazon, same kind of thing. This looks like an air hockey puck, but it was really inexpensive on Amazon. And that is to, it's got a felt pad. I know that dry erase, uh, dry erase erasers, <laughs> those work really well as well. And probably just regular erasers because you've got that felt thing, but that is so you can basically do even pressure on your apparatus. So that's what they're talking about is something like this to do even pressure to get a great inked image. So yes, I do use it, especially when I'm doing a lot of multiples. It kind of helps my wrists to do that. Hello, Millie. I spend a lot of time selecting colors for projects. Do you have a suggestion to make that easier? I have a couple of suggestions because I'm the same way, Jennifer. I don't come up with color, uh, uh, color combos myself very easily. It's kind of a struggle. I always start with designer series papers and that gives me colors for inspiration. And be besides that, like tonight, I will look at our catalogs and look to see what colors the design artists have been using. And those color com combinations are almost always top notch. So either designer series paper or the um, project samples in the catalogs. And then the third place I'll go is just Pinterest to look at um, other projects and to get some color ideas there as well. I don't typically come up with color combos on my own. They're usually inspired by something I've seen either in a magazine or a catalog or Pinterest or something like that. 
Could you include the host DSP design a daydream in the starter kit? You cannot, Patty. That is actually only able to be purchased with Stampin' Rewards, which are earned on orders of $150 or more. I know that sounds like that would work in the starter kit, but it's strictly just a host exclusive, but you could earn that on a future demonstrator order of 150 or more and purchase that with the Stampin' Rewards that you earn on those orders. I hope that makes sense. Can you make this box with cardstock or will it be too heavy? Absolutely you can. Uh, I chose to make it out of designer series paper just because the starting size is six by six. So it's real economical to create out of designer series paper, either our six by six or our 12 by 12. You can get four of them, but absolutely you can create it with cardstock as well. It would actually give it a lot more strength and sturdiness. You just would only be able to get one out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. But if you have 12 by 12, you can get uh, four of them out of a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. P uh, Papa Pixie weathered Ian just fine. He headed east for a couple of nights, uh, missed the traffic and didn't have damage at his property. So thank you for asking. Would those nice mini letter openers fit in there? Uh, let's see, I think up here maybe one of those projects. Brian's looking for my project from a couple weeks. It was one of these ones. Oh, here it is. We're gonna check, let's see. Yes, they would. Oh yeah, it's like I'm showing you like you can see it. This is what um, Nikki is asking about. So yes, they absolutely, oops, I'm going the wrong way. They absolutely would. Great question. All right. Can we see your new tool caddy? You sure can. Let's see, come back to this. I found this on Amazon, it's nothing fancy. But this is kind of what it is. It's, it actually, I think, is intended. I shared this last week. I like to find things out of the box that are not normally for their intended purpose. This I was advertised as, I think, a remote control caddy. <laughs> Sometimes when you spend enough time on Amazon, you can start to see um, you know, different search terms to use. But this is what it is. And it's just my most favorite tools. Um, I'm going to be replacing that with a nail buffer because this one's all beat up and it's probably about 10 years old from Stampin' Up, but dimensionals, tear and tape, I got to squeeze it a little bit to fit in there. This is a thinner roll of post-it tape. Um, what else do I usually put in here? Uh, my glue, I just set right in there. It's always upside down. These are my most used tools, paper snips, bone folder, glue, and then uh, my glue dots would fit here as well. So. That's my caddy, and I would show you my trash can, but it's on the floor, upside down. <laughs> oh, goodness, gotta love that. Um, okay, got that. I did get the record sleeves for the 12 by 12 paper, and so far, so good working, Elizabeth. Let me show you that really quickly. These are uh, vinyl record sleeves. They are 12 and 3 quarters by 12 and 3 quarters. And I, um, there's a couple of different options. I liked this one because it was uniform height and width. Um, but yeah, it's working great. Just have it labeled and I just throw my scraps in there and it holds at least two packs of the paper. I actually, probably four to be honest, because we've got a couple of mega packs that are 48 sheets of 12 by 12 and those fit in there as well. So love that. Let's see. Does Brian like to occasionally dabble with your supplies? Mm, a little bit, but for not anything related to stamping. Like you've you've used some of my cardstock for using with the laser cutter and but yeah, I haven't been able to get him to make a card. But we're working on that. <laughs> when you cut out a section, do you cut on the score line or on one side of it or where? Lydia, I cut right up the middle in most cases unless I tell you otherwise. So for this project, I just cut right up the middle of the score line. That works fine. How do you keep your cutting plates from warping? I don't store them in the cut and emboss machine, but they still warp. So uh, Brian does a lot of the multi-cutting for us around here. And you swap the top plate with the bottom plate when the top plate starts to warp. When the magnet plate starts to go haywire, mm -hmm. it's time to switch. <laughs> okay. So he uses the magnetic platform, the Sizzix one from a couple years ago. And when when that starts to warp, you know how the, the dies jump the magnets? That's kind of his hint that, okay, it's time to swap. And you don't flip them. You just alternate. You bring the bottom to the top. Right. 
So he just kind of goes back and forth that way, probably about whatever, every 15 to 20 cuts around that. You just kind of got to let the plates tell you when it's time to flip. But for the most part, we don't flip either side. It's just kind of swapping the top from the bottom. But everybody's uh, machine is a little bit different as far as pressure. So there is lots of suggestions out there for what works um, as far as flipping plates and doing that type of thing. So just try a couple different things and see what works with your machine. Some of the embossing folders are really thick and hard to run through my Big Shot. Any suggestions? Yes, Yvette. So we've got two different types of embossing folders. We have the regular ones, and then we have our 3D ones. Those are the ones that are thicker. And those ones, all you need is the, this is plate number four, but this and the base plate. So on the die cutting, the base plate, it has a lot of instructions here. So take a look at those. Using 3D embossing folders, you do the base plate, which is plate number one, then your 3D embossing folder, and then this goes on top. And that's all you need for your sandwich with the 3D. When you use the regular embossing folders, it's base plate and then two cutting plates. So you would sandwich your regular embossing folder between these two. Again, that is listed here in the embossing folder section on the instructions on the plate, okay? All right. Any particular reason you're using both Terran tape and liquid glue? I just used the Terran tape uh, because it made it a little bit easier to put together. I could kind of control, you could absolutely use liquid glue as well, but just because of the way that you've already glued the tabs down and then folding that bottom sort of envelope flap up, I just found it easier with Terran tape, but liquid glue works just as well. Do I have one of the mini vacuum devices? I do, Nicole. I just had it out. Where did I put it? somewhere. I know I just had it. Anyways, I don't see it right now. But yes, I do have one. It is listed on my favorites page. I use it most often for picking up um, dimensional backings, embossing powder, stray embossing powder, um, little things that are light like that because it's not super powerful, but it works great to pick up things like that. Oh, the stylish shapes sold out before shipping. Oh, bummer. I didn't even think to, I didn't even notice that on the inventory status report. They're good though. Um, we'll have a free shipping day again. Don't worry. Will the extra die cut piece fit on the card that you put in the box envelope? Great question. Let's check it. It sure will. All right, look. I love it. Great suggestion. And then like a cute little sentiment. Um, in the catalog, there is a really cute, in one of the samples, they took many thanks. They stamped sending many thanks and then they cut out just the word many thanks and kind of like a little mini banner. So take a look at that sample in the catalog. I think that was on page 55. Great suggestion. Love it. Let's see. Yes, expect warpage. That's right, I love that word. <laughs> Rotate, turn, flip to give your plates a different place to hit the rollers. The cookies are called Loker Minis, L-O-A-K-E-R. And I will link to them in the description to where you can find them on Amazon, but if you're a Costco member, I understand they're at Costco as well. Uh, ETA for craft room tour. <laughs> Oh gosh, I said by the end of the year, I think is what I promised. So we're gonna stick to that for now. I don't have a specific, so before the end of the year. <laughs> oh gosh. The pearlized paper is called shimmery white. I love it because it's thicker. It's like our thick basic white. Got a little bit of shimmer. It's a little bit of an off white. It's not bright white like our um, basic white is. Um, and it's really great for watercoloring and using stamp and blends. Again, it has a really pretty shimmer to it. Hard to get on camera. The best way to clean the photopolymer stamps, a couple of different ways. My favorite is um, the Stampin' Scrub with Stampin' Mist. 
Um, that is where you uh, you have one side of the Stampin' Scrub, you spritz with Stampin' Mist. It's got a little bit, I think there's like glycerin. It's like a stamp conditioner in it. And um, spray one side to clean and the other side is to dry. You can also use the Simply Chamois, um, but my preference is the uh, Stampin' Scrub. That's my favorite. How long have I been making cards? Uh, it's been 12 years, like 12 and a half years, Crystal. I started in... Um, well, I joined Stampin' Up! in February of 2010. I was dabbling in card making a little bit before that, where I fell in love with heat embossing. And I do, I remember my first few cards. I'm not sure I know exactly the first card, but I bet if I went back to my photos, I'd find it for sure. Um, but yeah, I loved, we got, I got into using the Cricut at the beginning and heat embossing. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been uh, card making for about 12 years now. Do the ink pads come with the stickers? Uh, my ink storage, I will have to store them sideways. Ooh, so Yvette, one of the issues with storing the ink pads sideways is your ink is gonna travel down and you might run into leakage issues. So you definitely wanna try to store them flat any way possible because otherwise you're gonna, you'll start to have ink kind of spilling out. They do come with the stickers on the bottom. So all the stickers except for the Memento, the Stazon, and the Versamark. Um, but all the colors come with four stickers on the bottom, multiple languages and such. But essentially, you'll get a label for the front. You'll get um, a label for the inside right there. And then there is an extra label that, um, because we used to have them in Japanese, it's now blank. You could put on the back so that from either side you could see the color. Some people also put it on the sides here so that when the ink is open, they can see. So a couple of different ways, but you definitely want to try to store them flat if at all possible. Should you use stays on with, did I miss any? Okay, should you use stays on with photopolymer and should the ink be sticky? I find when using it with my Stamparatus, it always lifts when I lift the plate, no matter how many magnets I use. So first part of that question, no, you should not use stays on with photopolymer because the solvent ink is actually not good for photopolymer. If you have to use it because of whatever project you're doing, make sure you clean it really quickly. The stays on cleaner is not good for our photopolymer set. So I would try to um, either be okay with it being stained, but try to clean it really quickly with the Stampin' Mist. The stickiness is actually coming from the photopolymer. It's not the inks themselves. And that's part of why they stick so well to our plates and our clear blocks. Um, over time, this photopolymer stamps won't be as sticky, but I also recommend that when you lift the plate from the Stamparatus, a couple of things you can try. One is to slowly lift the plate, but I also find, and let me do this, I have a big mess in front of me, but let me just briefly share with you. I try to push right here at the hinge, like just inside the hinge, to start to have this edge pop up and I find that it will usually, now it's sticking to my grid paper, but it will usually release the paper if you can push near the hinge, okay? So just a tip there, I don't know if that will help you, but give it a try. Let's see. I love Aldi for quirky containers like that. Found a super cheap cosmetic storage unit that works perfectly for all your scrapping tools. That was another thing I was looking at was um, makeup storage and that type of thing because there's so many, I don't know, It's you have to get creative about the things that you search for. I don't have the record sleeves linked yet, Kristen, because I just got them in. I usually wait until I love them before I post on my favorites page, but I will add them for sure. How are we doing? Oh, uh, will you have the link for the record sleeves? Yes, I will. I do not, I, okay, so I did purchase a record holder for it. It is way too big. So I don't know, oh, wait, hold on. Let's go back to this. I don't know if you can see right here. When I do my craft room tour, right here, I will show you that is a pot or a baking sheet holder. <laughs> I love it. It holds all of my 12 by 12 and it's just sitting on my desk as little rubber feet. So I will be testing that a little bit longer and that will make it to my Facebook or to my favorites page. 
The record um, bin that I purchased is really deep and I just don't have that much designer series paper. So, um, but that's the scoop there. Good question. I will link to the tool caddy. Yes, Deborah. How do you get stamps fully inked without skipping or pooling ink? There's a couple of things, Lynn. The photopolymer sometimes, especially with the memento ink, um, I think because the memento ink is water-based, it likes to pool up on the um, photopolymer photo sets. Sometimes it takes stamping it a few times and then the ink will start sticking to it. You could also use very gently, but some of these more abrasive erasers. I would actually not start with the ink sand eraser. Um, but I would use, you could use the adhesive eraser, which that was in my caddy, but I don't know where it went. Um, just to kind of rough up the photopolymer set a little bit. A lot of people swear by kind of wiping on their jeans. Um, but that just to get the ink to stick to it better. Those are a couple of ideas. Oh, my sales numbers. I just reached um, half a million. So I'm halfway there. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Um, I absolutely can do that, Kathy, is showing my some time cleaning my stamp using the stamp and scrub and stamp and mist. Absolutely, I will share that. Do I store my memento ink and Versamark with the lid up or down? I've done both, but I thought I heard someone say put them with the lids down. I do, yes, so I do store them upside down. I label them that way, so there's my ink pad, store it upside down. The sleeves I purchased from Amazon as well. It's kind of my go-to place for all things storage. So I think we are at the end of the um, questions. Yay. All right, let's go. Where am I here? All right, coming back to this. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed tonight's video and got some great tips or tricks or learned something new, we'd love for you to subscribe to our channel like this video. It does help us here on YouTube. I'm grateful for all of you who have joined us live and thank you to all of you who have watched the replay. I will be live again next week on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern time next Wednesday for episode 259. Again, thank you so much for joining us for tonight's project that I've deconstructed, <laughs> but here we go. Thank you again. I'll see you next Wednesday and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Take good care. Bye.